there, it's Lena Gersa from Ala Cards, and today I have a tutorial that will show you how to create this beautiful fall background. So I'll lift, move this a little bit closer. Um, I'm going to show you that this is really an easy technique to do and gives you some real wow results. Now this has been around for a while this technique. Um, I learned it originally as Joseph's Coat, also sometimes called Emerging Colors. and. Uh, whatever name you learned it by or you've heard it by, um, it certainly is a wow technique and it's one that um, I get requested a lot when I do classes. So I just thought I would show it to you and you can give it a try on your own. So let's give it a go. To start, I need a four by five and a quarter inch piece of Whisper White cardstock. And this is just the regular Whisper White, not the thick Whisper White. Um, we're gonna start by sponging on some color. I'm going to start with Cajun Craze, which is a lovely sort of fall rust color. And I'm just going to sponge in sort of random spots some of that rust color onto my white cardstock. Okay, there's not really any rhyme or reason to this at all. Okay. Next, I'm going to come in with a brighter orange. This is Tangela Twist, which is one of our in colors. And we're going to add some brighter color. So I'm just going to go and add some of that orange. And I'm going to, wherever it's touching the Cajun Craze, I want to make sure that I'm overlapping so that I get those colors to sort of blend. Okay, and you'll see how great they look when they overlap and blend together. Now the other thing is I want to make sure that I'm still leaving some white space because I want to be able to add one more color here. Okay, you want to use a fair bit of pressure when you're sponging so you get really vibrant color. Okay, next I'm going to use some Hello Honey, which is a lovely warm yellow, perfect for fall. Another one of our in colors. And now I'm going to go and fill in the rest of those white spaces. I'm also going to overlap the other sponged areas so that I get that color again to blend. And you can see where those points of intersection where the different colors meet, they sort of blend and merge into the new color. Okay, so there's my lovely colorful sponge background. Easy peasy, right? Now we need to do some stamping. Now, but the next step is the most crucial one. If you miss this, you're going to have a really hard time and you're not going to get good results. Um, you want to take your embossing buddy, which is um, a, an absolutely indispensable tool for embossing. And you want to use it liberally all over the front of your cardstock. So I'm tapping it first to get lots of powder going. I always say there should be powder flying when you're doing this technique. Okay, and then I'm just going to rub it to sort of brush off that powder. Okay, that is going to take some of the moisture from all of that ink that we just put down out of that cardstock so that when we emboss, we only get uh, the embossing powder sticking to our stamped image. So now I'm going to take um, a stamp, and this stamp is from the Wondrous Wreath stamp set. So I'm going to use this particular stamp, which is from, as I said, the Wondrous Wreath set. We're going to use this one. Um, just as random leaves. This one is actually intended to be layered over top of the wreath and to create some accent leaves, but for our purposes we're just going to use that image in a totally different way. So I'm going to take some Versamark and ink up my stamp and stamp on my background. And I'm going to do this a bunch of times, making sure that I get good coverage and then I'm turning the stamp because of that opening in the middle, you gotta make sure that you sort of overlap the image or you're gonna have sort of a weird circular pattern going. That looks good. All right, now I'm gonna take some clear embossing powder and my embossing tray and I'm gonna pour some of that powder all over my panel. Tap off the excess. 
Now, I've done a pretty good job with my embossing buddy. I've still got a few stray little flecks of powder. So not to worry, those can be brushed off. It's just a little paintbrush. So we'll just kind of tap those off. Sometimes I find it helps to give it a little tap on the backside too. There we go. All right, let's get that out of the way. Now I get to heat. Now, this is the step where the magic happens. This is when, when I teach this technique in a class, everybody goes, whoa, that's so cool. So I'm gonna take some dark colored ink. I'm using early espresso, but you can use any one of our darker ink shades. And I'm going to sponge all over the surface of this panel. And what you're gonna see as I start to do this is the magic. This is where the embossed areas, those leaves, resist the ink and allow that bright, vibrant fall color to show through. Now, you're gonna need to put a lot of ink down on this. Where people fail at this technique is when they don't use enough of that dark ink to cover the lighter, brighter colors underneath. Okay, so you've gotta put a lot of ink down. If you're finding you're not getting much ink from your ink pad, give it a re-inking and then have a go. Okay, my pad's actually starting to get dry. I need to give it a little bit more ink. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, you're going to get inky fingers. That's inevitable with this technique. That's okay. That's how you show that you've had some fun. Now, the last step with this is to take a tissue and just give it a wipe all over to take off some of that excess ink. Now you see how much ink is coming off of there? And that's just going to allow those bright colors to really shine through. Get rid of all of that. And there you go. Look at that beautiful fall background. Now I'm going to bring in the finished project again. So there it is. And I'll just give you some information on the other project or products that I used on this project. Um, as I said, I used the Wondrous Wreath Set to do my leaves. Um, to do this cutout, I used the Leaflets Framelit Set. So I die cut the maple leaf shape. And then I used a bit of watercolor paper and stamped using this new stamp set, this awesome new stamp set from the upcoming holiday catalog called Happy Scenes. So I used this fall scene here. I stamped it in our new archival black ink, which is absolutely fabulous. It is water resistant, it is permanent, and it's perfect for watercoloring. So I stamped um, my image in the black and then watercolored just using my Stampin' Write markers and an aqua painter. Um, I layered that behind my die cut uh, opening and adhered the panel to a Cajun Craze card base. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half. I die cut another leaf from using the leaflets framelits from gold glimmer paper and then stamped this little banner using another new stamp set called Cheer All Year. Now this one is also going to be available in the upcoming holiday catalog and it actually coordinates with a wreath kit which is absolutely stunning. It is a kit um, that allows you to create a wreath that can be used for all seasons. So all you do is change some of the um, decorations on the wreath and the wreath can stay up from September right through the Christmas season. So I used this Hello Autumn sentiment, stamped it in early espresso ink, added a little bit of baker's twine. So that's a quick and easy project, but gives a real wow thanks to that technique. Now I'm going to show you a couple of other variations. So I have a few more fall versions. This is one I did using um, the oak leaf from, not this one, from this stamp set for all things. Now this one is in the annual catalog. I actually debuted in last year's holiday catalog has some wonderful watercolor effect um, images and some sentiments. I used the oak leaf, as I said, to create my background. 
Now what I did in this one that's a little bit different is rather than doing sort of random splotches of color, I actually did stripes of color. So I kind of created an ombre effect. Now I also use slightly different shades of ink. Here I use Crush Curry for the yellows, a little bit more vibrant. Um, I stuck with Tangelo Twist and then down here I used uh, Cherry Cobbler instead of Cajun Craze to get some of that red. I still use my early espresso to do my background. Now you're going to see a couple of other new products on here. This cute little um, sentiment image is from another new set called A Corny Thank You. Isn't that too cute? Um, it's got some sentiments. It's got a really cute little acorn that actually coordinates with a new punch that is available in a bundle with this set. Um, it's an acorn punch. Now, I don't have the punch yet. It's coming next week. So I actually fussy cut my acorn, but I can't wait to get that punch. It's going to make it much quicker and easier to, uh, to use this set. Now, the other new product in this project is the background um, embossing folder. So this one is sort of a tree or forest pattern and it is absolutely gorgeous. I've used it a dozen times already. Love, love, love it. Um, works for fall theme, for masculine cards, works for Christmas cards. So it is another one that will be available in the upcoming holiday catalog. Here's one more sort of fall themed project. Now this one I used the sheltering tree stamp set. So this is one that debuted in this spring's occasion, occasions catalog and uh, carried over into our annual catalog and I'm so glad because again this is a super versatile set, lots of sentiments, works for any season for masculine cards, uh, just about any type of card. Now to create this background, um, again I used the same colors, so I used Crush Curry, um, Tangelo Twist and Cherry Cobbler. But to create that background, that sort of splotchy background, I used the leaves from the sheltering tree. Okay, and I just stamped that randomly all over and that gave me that, that interesting background. Now, this technique works for more than just fall colors and fall theme cards. Um, I want to show you a couple projects that I did um, that are not fall themed. So here's one that I made using the watercolor wing stamp set. So here's that stamp set. Um, I used the small solid butterfly. You could certainly do um, the larger one. It would work really well as well. And my color scheme for this one is a little different. I used Mint Macaron, um, Lost Lagoon, and Rich Razzleberry for my sponge colors. And then to cover all of that, once I'd done my embossing, I used Night of Navy. And I love the color combo. It really pops. So there's an example of this technique used in a different way. And then I have one more for you. This one I did using the Flower Patch stamp set. So here's the stamp set. Okay, now this one debuted in last year's annual catalog and is still available in the current annual catalog. Has lots of solid images that work really well for this technique. So on this one, I stuck with a more monochromatic color scheme. So I used shades of blue. So I started with Pool Party, Lost Lagoon, and Island Indigo. And then I used Night of Navy to cover once I had done my embossing. So this is a totally different look, but really, really pretty. So as you can see, this technique has lots of possibilities. And I really hope you give it a try. And uh, just explore what can happen with this cool, cool technique. Thanks for watching. Thank you.